Um, hello, my name is Sarah Novas. Um, I am an intern here at Vibrance. And today I will be interviewing Juan Pablo Siles. Okay, so can we just have a little introduction about you and the organization? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting me. That this is great, uh, great platform. So I appreciate your time and um, you making some space for me to talk about regiones. So my name is uh, my name is Juan Pablo Siles. Uh, I am the artistic director of regiones. Regiones is a free um, annual performing arts series, and our goal and our mission is to promote. Uh, commission and present uh, works by artists with Latin American Caribbean roots. Um, and it's all done under the non-traditional and sort of experimental aesthetic. So um, we value very much traditional and folk uh, from our countries, but I believe um, it's also very important to highlight uh, experimental work that is being created by artists from with roots and from uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. Okay. So, um, what was the inspiration to start Regiones? Like, what was, I, I guess I would say, like, that moment that you knew, like, you wanted to do this kind, of, this type of work? Yeah, certainly. So <clears throat> I've been working for a little bit at an organization called Brooklyn Academy of Music. And at BAM, which has been fundamental to my education in terms of uh, the aesthetic in theater and music and dance that I seek now to present and to um, that I'm like very fond of. Um, so after being there for like three or four years, I kept sort of asking myself like, okay, this is interesting because productions that are coming to these stages are primarily European um, and have a very specific aesthetic. You know, it's, it's, it's very, um, it's sort of boundary pushing. They use a lot of technology, use of light and video in their work. So I was very much drawn to that work, but at the same time, I was questioning why is it that not a lot of um, artists or directors or choreographers or musicians from other parts of the world were being exposed and presented there. Um, so I tried to do some professional development um, programs for myself, and I found myself doing this program called um, the uh, Atelier for Festival Managers. Um, and this is created to be completely fair and transparent by a European organization um, that is bringing together several festival programmers and managers from all around the world, um, basically to this hub where like we all talk about the ideas, sort of the obstacles, and also um, ways of uh, innovating within the field of uh, presenting and festival management. So while there, one of the projects was to just think on what an ideal festival for, you know, one, in this case for me, would look like. Um, and as I thought more about it, I really wanted to integrate uh, bringing in uh, the community that I identify uh, as being a part of, which is the Latin American and Caribbean community, um, into the fold of the festival circuit, basically. Um, when you think about festivals around the world, I think you probably like think about Edinburgh, um, you know, festivals in Australia that are very huge and important circus festivals around the world. Um, and then there are a couple of festivals happening in Latin America. I mean, certainly more than just a couple, but like uh, the more prominent ones are located in Buenos Aires and Santiago de Chile and these, you know, in South America. And, and these festivals, while they're like doing really great things, they're also sort of presenting very much localized artists and also trying to bring European theater and dance and artists to their stages because I'm from Bolivia, you know, funds for the arts are very low there. So, um, you know, if, if you can raise funds and, and develop this idea to present European artists, it's like a huge accomplishment. So it's like, that's the way that you basically move forward if you want to have a festival and like how you make it big or how you like break mainstream is like by inviting these artists that are also part of these other larger uh, European festivals, right? So in my head, I was like, well, I want to combine something that is actually like inviting the community that I am part of 
and at the same time have a dialogue with the audience of the community that I am part of, basically. Um, and I had lived in Bushwick for a couple of years already. And, you know, I'm not a New York native. I, I came to New York in like 2013. And one of the things that astounded me more is like, you know, these pockets of places where like, oh, this place is like very much, you know, it's very much a Latin American culture and like a Caribbean culture. You're like walking around and you have a lot of people that are like talking to you in Spanish or have like certain restaurants that are like, you know, rem basically remind you of home, you know? And, and that's how I felt when, when I was in Bushwick. I, I just very much felt like I was at home. Um, and so, you know, all these things percolated in my head and then I, um, found out about this festival that happened in 2017, I believe. Um, and it's called Pacific Standard Time LA LA. And this was done in California. And I don't know if you know about it, but this was an initiative by the Getty Institute. Um, and it was in collaboration with arts institutions around Southern California. So there's a huge, huge array of not only arts in institutions, but curators that were like gathering information about Latin American art. Um, and it was over 70 artists, I believe. It was like huge and massive. Um, and that's sort of how I like started learning more about South American artists, you know, being someone from South America and paying very little attention to South American artists that are actually creating that sort of work was sort of like, you know, a light, a light bulb, like, you know, sort of like lit. And I was like, oh, you know, that would be interesting and that would be cool. Um, and I think, with the resources and the education that I had already uh, gotten from working at this large institution at BAM, I sort of thought, you know what, I think I can put together a proposal and sort of start writing grants um, and gathering resources, financial resources specifically, um, to basically pay artists because that's the other thing, you know, someone has a good idea and the other, you know, the way that you like start doing this is by oh, let's showcase your work. It's a platform. I'm not going to pay for your work. I'm just going to like help you expose it. And, I, and right. that me has never resonated. You know, I have a background in music and the one thing every time I wanted to sit, you know, play stages, I like was really bummed out when um, promoters were like getting back to me and just saying like, oh yeah, like we don't pay you. You just come like, you know, you're yeah. lucky to have a space at our stage. Um, so, you know, all these things to say that that was sort of like how it came together, you know, that was, but the inspiration, you know, to be more clear, it was essentially this specific standard time. You know, I think, I think it just showed the vast array of experimental and uh, artistic work that I had not seen before um, that sort of led me to be like, well, I should be paying attention because that is my community and that's what I should be doing and that's what I should be looking into and not sort of just focusing on this like European aesthetic, so. Well, great. Um, so now that you like explained all of that wonderful stuff, um, I wanted to ask how is Regiones helping artists like me and like you and like just, you know, yeah i that's an interesting thing question because i think you know regiones is not helping artists i i believe are actually artists help regiones increase visibility you know i i think it's the other way around what i do want to say though is that uh, the purpose of regiones is to serve as advocate you know like advocate of the work advocate of the artist um, and how I want to do that is by not only connecting you as an artist, Sarah Novis as an artist, to another artist that is part of the program so that collaborations can exist in the future, but also the network that I've been part of in my sort of like um, arts professional education, you know, arts management education, um, where my circle of uh, colleagues is very much has the power to present and to like bring your work and like show it on like larger stages. Like, you know, and, and I think the way to achieve this is by actually like promoting dialogue and creating talks that are moderated by people that have the power to actually look into your work and be like, you know what, actually you would be cool for this other thing down the road that I have an idea of, you know, like people like Ali Rosa Salas who works at the Abrams Arts Center or Candace Thompson that is involved in dance NYC, 
um, you know, like I, to me more, like I've always seen my role as the facilitator. So I want to facilitate relationships. I want to facilitate um, the opportunity for other people to access more resources, more exposure, um, you know, and sort of like have their work be noticed. And, you know, to be fair, we're is it's a very small operation. It's a very small platform. So I think at this time, really, it's the other way around that like artists and their work are helping me put regiones, you know, like visibilize regiones. Um, because without the work that is being exposed by artists, I wouldn't be funded by Broken Arts Council. I wouldn't be given funds from the mayor's office of media and entertainment, you know? Like, I think it is because of the artistry that I am interested in presenting that then I get the funds so then I could then redistribute the resources. Um, because that's the other mission is like, I wanna be able to do the work, you know, the administrative work that is so daunting sometimes and so time consuming for, for artists to do so that artists can only just create you know, and then get compensated for that. So that's that's how I see it, but yeah. Great. Um, so having said that, um, and like, you know, talking about like compensation and like all kinds of like rewards for artists, um, what role do you believe an artist of any kind has in society? Like what kind of, do you feel like we have some sort of job that we should be, you know, like teaching people? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that there's a role that I think artists should have. Um, I do see artists as healers and as activists. I think very much the work that you create resonate with many people in different levels. Um, and I think, especially now, given our circumstances and the global health crisis, I think, you know, you want to see art to sort of like, escape reality a little bit right and, and i think that's how i see the artist's role it's like it's this healer and this um you know individual or group of individuals that are creating something beautiful for someone to um, experience or see or hear or watch or dance to or you know whatever it is that you're disciplined to an activist because i also resonate a lot with a lot of the artists that i follow are are activists by nature, you know, they're politicized, their art is politicized because they're responding to their surroundings and their sensitivity is important to also help educate people that might not be aware of what's happening around them. You know, it's, it's I think art is powerful and I truly believe that it is a catalyst for social change. So I, I do see, I see artists in that role, whether they have to be in that role or not, that's different. I don't necessarily think that one should be something, you know, based on like norms or standards. I think it is the result of just like the sensitivity and artistry of every artist that I've been in touch with. Well, on a, I have like a little side question now that you said yeah. that um, with your type of artistry, which is like music and you've studied music. Um, do you believe that musicians play some kind of role in like that kind of activist like sort of you know like yeah. i definitely see that I, I i get that point i you know it's tougher it's tougher because if if you're not dealing with words for example my you know i wanted to be a composer and i wanted to be someone that basically just like wrote for an ensemble right so i didn't want to have to deal with lyrics or anything like um, so I think when language is removed, it's, it's definitely more nuanced the way that you portray or that you show what like your role as an activist is, but I think you can still see it. I think for me, it's been, you know, and there's different layers. I mean, it, it might not be the, the ideal, um, example that I'm giving you right now. But for me, it was important to bring my culture into like my background, my, me being raised and me like being from Bolivia and what that means to me, bringing it to the fold of contemporary uh, composition in music. So I always wanted to try and experiment with native instruments and trying to um, 
raise a little bit more also of awareness of like where I'm coming from and, and how that has informed my experience. And I think, well, that's not an activist point of view and I at all, I don't consider myself an activist. Um, I think these nuanced, you know, little things can, can like come out and like be perceived as that basically. So, um, but it is definitely tougher. And I, you know, I haven't followed enough I mean, you know, the focus that I've given to the artistic world has been majority visual arts, dance, and theater. And these are very much, um, very much centered around politics. And I think music is a little bit less so if you don't have the lyrical part to it, but you have, you know, a bunch of like bands and groups and ensembles that are like very much activists and also activism doesn't necessarily need to be reflected in your art like i think you know by the fact that artists are sensitive and more empathetic in general i think that leads for them to be like you know i don't want to make it about a left or right sort of thing but like they are more left-leaning and they are more progressive and their ideas are more about equity right and about right. All, all of us should be at this level. No one, there shouldn't be a hierarchy. Um, so that's, you know, it, but it's interesting. So I appreciate your question because, because you're absolutely right. You know, music is a little bit tougher. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I understand. I totally get it. I just, you know, wanted to ask because, you know, I think that ties back into like the whole like compensation thing. And like, we don't really get paid sometimes for the work that we do, but we like enjoy doing it. Right. So sometimes like it doesn't really matter that much. Like we just like getting it out there and like showing people that we care and that we're aware of everything that's going on and we can create art about it. So I totally understand. Um, so now more of a fun question. Um, what is your favorite thing about working with different artists or like different mediums, I guess? Yeah, I, you know, to me, it's been developing those relationships and also how fast the relationship is built through, like, you know, it's always been, it's interesting because artistic administration has been so much about the email sending and the email receiving. And, like, um, you know, when you can have a meeting, that adds to it. But, like, primarily you're communicating through this very virtual world, right? So it's been it's been fun to get to know someone in that way. And you know, it's been interesting and it's been also like very um, engaging to learn about someone through their art, you know, through seeing the, the portfolio or the dossier that they have. It, it's cause you know, very much part of you is, you know, it, is, um, is put a, sort of put into the work that you're doing. Right. So I, I, I feel like when I see an artwork, I, I sort of like get a sense of who the, person is but i think also the artistic expression how through seeing the art that someone has made is like oh i understand like where this person is coming from and like right. you know that that sort of aesthetic like wow i wish i had that you know so it's it's been it's been fun to develop those relationships even though you know it hasn't been as close as to like say like oh we're all friends but like for me it is building a community right and I think it's it's been also really fun for me to just slowly gather all these people that I follow and that I'm interested in um, to sort of hopefully in the future, all we can all gather together, and we can all share ideas, and we can all just have a blast at the party. So um, I think that's been that's been the, the, the most fun that I've had is just watching the work and and really being you know, diving deep into the work and, and learning about it and learning where it's coming from and having conversations. It's, it's just been, it's refreshing, you know? Okay. So would you say that you like, well, I know that, you know, you did the festival last year when we didn't have the era of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask, like, would you say that you enjoyed more like the maybe like not the social aspect like like the but like do you i i want to ask if like now having done everything like online and like having meetings online and getting to know people 
like not in person and all the email sending like what would you say for you works better just like getting in contact with artists i certainly i i just i miss that so i i, I miss the physical aspect of it the the meeting in person i i definitely miss that i miss the fact that you know we can actually be in one place and talk at length and not be like constrained by you know you're at, yeah you're back home so you are wherever you are in an enclosed space you have certain things that will distract you will not you know it's it's not the same as just being in person and sharing a moment you know sort of one-on-one -on -one or like five on one you know like it's 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 such a different experience um i think one thing that i did get from this is just as i said this is such a small operation it's, it's basically me and then my wife helps me and my brother helps me right so from the production side of it it was it was nice to be able to engage a little bit more with the artist and not be so much of like all right we just need to get you to on stage just get get on with it and then we'll like hang out afterwards you know um so i think i think there's a little bit of balance but i i certainly you know i certainly miss just being able to have a performance in person and being able to you know we we had artists that were going to fly in from 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 germany that are living in germany and, and that you know their perspective and their experience their life experience is shaped by that community that they're living in and is so different than the one that we live in and and you know people were going to come from puerto rico and and they have a different sort of worldview and uh, people were coming from california and that's you know sort of other sort of way of thinking it's just all these things that you don't get i mean you do get because you have the people talking in an online platform right like virtually but at the same time i feel like you miss so much of the of, of the human yeah the humanity of it i don't know so certainly miss that for sure okay and now um we we are going to critique the art world a little bit and i'm going to ask you know what do you dislike about the art world if anything um, and what do you think could be improved or maybe like changed just a little bit? Yeah. Um, this is a huge question. One that I don't know that I have the right words to critique or not, but one thing that I do observe from my experience is that larger institutions are more reluctant, um, to create space for less and lesser known artists. You know, it's, it's taking that risk because you have such a big platform, it seems, or I get the sense that they're less inclined to take huge risks because it comes down to, well, like how many tickets are we gonna sell? And if we don't sell enough tickets, like what is that? Right. And the other thing is like the, the selling of the tickets is so, it presents such an obstacle. And that was also part of the reasoning behind Rikyona as being a free uh, event is because if you want to engage with a community that doesn't have access to like this sort of artistic world, um, it's because there's there's a there's there's a wall, literally a wall, and it's financial, and it's and it's not only you know them not being able to go into the theater because they don't feel welcome, but it also is because you'd rather spend you know whatever 50, 60 bucks in something that is more needed or has you know the way that you allocate budgets is like very yeah. so that's another critique i think i think art should be more accessible um from an economic point of view um so i don't know taking more risks being more flexible uh, making more space for people that don't already um enjoy or like have the privilege of having money to to, to pay for a performance I think that's important and and because it then creates these like very um you know narrow and like not huge um universes you know it's like an echo chamber you're like basically like inviting the same artists over and over right again. yeah you inviting have like that one over and small over. 
Exactly. So it, it doesn't, it, like, it's not expansive. I feel like that's true. You know, I'm sure there are many arguments, you know, that could go against what I'm saying. Um, and I'm open to hearing them from anyone that has that. Um, but I, I, if I would be able, if I were in charge and I would be able to get a say in like how things are done, I would certainly, that's the one change that I would try to enact is, you know, making art performances and any sort of artistic exposure more, more accessible. Um, okay. And I just have one more little side question before our last question. Yeah. Um, and that is what can be expected of regiones like in the coming months or year like are, are we can we yeah. expect something new so <clears throat> yeah i mean definitely i want to keep working towards making this um a recurring thing you know it's it's tough in the climate that we're in right now because so much of any of the work that we do depends on having funds and so much of having funds depends on the relationships that I'm building with people that are funding it. Um, so there's always after, you know, like last year was great. And then after, after everything was done last year, I went into this deep state of like, Oh my God, I don't think this can happen next year. Cause I don't even know if I'm going to have funds. So I'm at that stage right now. So you can certainly expect something to happen next year, whether it's because we didn't have any perform live performances this year. Maybe it is a version of this program that we finally put on stage or like program something at the park. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can continue to fundraise enough to pay artists and to be able to make everything accessible and free um but because it is a yearly event it wouldn't be up until next year you know i think yeah. the one thing that i can always direct people to is our website just because that's where information lives um, um you know follow us on instagram we're not huge posters because again it is a one person <laughs> or three person sometimes um operation so it sort of diet you know sort of like teeters off um, after August, like you won't see another Instagram post for like the foreseeable future because now I'm like, now I'm having to work towards what next year will look like and that will keep most of my attention. And I think, you know, we don't have that huge of a platform. So again, it's, it's like the engagement has to be real, right? And it has to be, um, has to go somewhere and, and I think we're not yet at that stage where like people are expecting, you know, oh, what's coming. Like, I want to see like what's happening with your Instagram or like doing these follows or like, what are you saying on Twitter? Or, like these things. I don't think that's the way that we are. Um, we're at, not at that stage. So, um, yeah, I think for now, uh, I guess expect something next August in New York, uh, and we'll keep you posted. Okay, um, and my last question is, well, not really a question. I want, I, I want to, I want to get a little more out of you, you know, give me some, some inspiring message or like advice for like artists now or like people who don't do art but are interested or future artists, like what would be your like special message? Yeah, you know, I think the one thing I love about all of this is collaboration. Um, and I think that's so important to collaborate with people because you, your ideas are great, but if you don't have the support of other people, they won't come true. You know, they won't, they won't happen. Um, and I think also collaboration just expands the universe of what is possibility. Um, so that's the one thing that I always try to keep in mind is just, it's very important to collaborate, to talk to other people, um, you know, like talk to people about your ideas and see where they're at, what they think. Um, and I think another thing that I just, I sort of took from the current world that we live in is just, you know, 
like be as experimental as you can, you know, I, whether you, or not you achieve the like ideal product, that's, to me, that doesn't matter so much. It's more what you gain from trying and whether succeeding or failing. It was, you know, for us, and, and I, I don't know if I've said this, but this year's program was not only online and having discussions online and having like some sort of like workshop virtually, but it was also to put out a magazine, which I've never done myself in my life. Um, and, and to call it a magazine is too much. Like really what it was, it was a portfolio or like, you know, uh, like a gallery, you know, like a, a gallery in pages of works created by the artists that I was interested in presenting. Um, and added to that, just to experiment even further was like, how can we make this be digital also? And, and how can we like tap into augmented reality? Is that even possible? Is it cool? Does it serve a purpose? And most of those questions ended up being like, I don't know if it serves a purpose, but I think it's cool and we could do it and we experimented, but it was an experiment. And um, while not every artist got an opportunity to like showcase more work in that sort of realm of the augmented reality world, um, I, I think it just elevated the magazine to something else, you know, and, and hopefully in the future people will look back and be like, oh, actually they did this and that was cool. You know, it, this has been done for a long time. It's been like since 2014, people have been experimenting with augmented reality. I think for me, it's more like, I don't know that the performing arts world has been so focused or interested in um, diving into that uh, technology. Um, so I think for me, it's more like, you know, the technology is there and it's available. And it's like when people started recording because they had access to like cheap recording stuff, you know, it's like, oh, my computer can now record. I can put out a record now. Like that's easy. I don't have to deal with labels now. So, it, and it's the same now, like, oh, I don't need a camera. I don't need a gallery for me to like showcase my like art, you know, I can not only like create a website, I can also just like hang out with someone that is interested in creating an app and that could be our app, you know, because apps, you know, are there by the bunch. Um, so I think just to like, yeah, collaboration and, and experimentation, I think those two are like the main things that I try to keep, you know, in my head at all times of like, how are you gonna approach this? Well, think creatively, think collaboratively, and just, you know, give it a shot. Well, um, this is the end of our interview. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, and we shall see more Juan because Regiones is not going nowhere. So right. yeah, thank, you, thank you so much, Juan. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. I, I appreciate this. And also thank you for your art. It was really an honor to have been able to present that as part of our program. Thank you. Cool. All right.
Thank you.